Reston is a more attractive and more enjoyable place to live because of our four man-made lakes. A recent survey showed that many Reston Association members use and enjoy the lakes. Some of us walk the shorelines. Some of us enjoy fishing and boating. All of us like being close to the water. But using and enjoying Reston's lakes carries a responsibility for protecting and preserving them. Each lake is a living thing which is fragile and vulnerable to both man-made and natural changes. Like all living things, lakes grow old and eventually die. The aging process can take hundreds of years for an undisturbed natural lake, but can be reduced to just decades for man-made urban lakes. Extending the useful life of the lakes is the goal of lake management and maintenance activities. Although the Reston Association has the responsibility for managing Reston's lakes, each resident plays a part in keeping our lakes usable and healthy. To do your part, you need to know something about the factors that influence the health of a lake. The most basic fact of a lake's life is what is called the hydrologic cycle, the process every lake goes through as it loses and replenishes its water. Lakes lose water from overflow, seepage, and evaporation. They replenish their water largely through rainfall runoff. Where its water comes from is a major determinant of a lake's water quality. Water is carried into our lakes by streams and storm sewers and by direct runoff of water that is not absorbed by the land. Therefore, the most significant influence on the life of any lake is what happens to its surrounding watershed, the area around a lake that actually drains into it. Let's take a closer look at each of Reston's lakes and their watersheds. Lake Anne, Reston's oldest lake, has a surface area of 27 acres and a maximum depth of 23 feet. The residency time for water in Lake Anne, that is the length of time water stays in the lake, is a short 10 weeks. Lake Anne is surrounded by a 600 acre watershed. Lake Newport, the newest lake, actually lies within Lake Anne's watershed and acts as a storm water catch basin for that portion of the watershed. Lake Newport has a surface area of 12 and a half acres, a watershed of 132 acres, a maximum depth of 19 feet, and a residency time of about 12 months. The largest watershed surrounds Lake Audubon. At 1,600 acres, this watershed contributes much water to the 44-acre lake. Because of its shallow maximum depth of 21 feet and its large watershed, Lake Audubon's residency time matches Lake Anne's, about 10 weeks. Lake Thoreau lies within the Lake Audubon watershed and serves as a catch basin for that portion of the watershed. This 40-acre lake is surrounded by a very small watershed of 375 acres. The golf course occupies a significant portion of the watershed area. Lake Thoreau, with a maximum depth of 38 feet, contains nearly twice as much water as Lake Anne or Lake Audubon. Because of its small watershed, the residency time for Lake Thoreau is about 19 months, the longest of Reston's lakes. The health of each of our lakes depends on what it receives from its watershed. Therefore, management of activities within the watershed is essential. Watershed management must focus on control of nutrient input, minimizing the impact of urban runoff, control of soil erosion, control of chemical input, wildlife management, and public information. First, let's look at ways to control nutrient input. Unknowingly, many day-to-day -day activities of Reston residents, from washing cars to over-fertilizing lawns and gardens, can lead to problems in the lakes. These activities in the watershed add chemical inputs to the lake, which are called nutrients. Nutrients are a chief cause of water quality problems, mostly because of their effect on living things in the lake. Like all plants, 
Lake algae need nutrients, such as phosphorus and nitrogen, for growth. But when there are too many nutrients in the water, algae become dense, clouding the water and triggering alterations in the lake's delicately balanced web of life. Some of the algae die and sink to the lower levels of the lake where they decompose and release nutrients back to the water. Also, bacteria that attack the decomposing algae consume much oxygen, gradually reducing the supply and making the lake unlivable to fish and other life forms. Algae in the right amounts are beneficial for a healthy lake, but preventing the growth of too much algae requires conservation practices within the watershed like the proper application of fertilizers, control of pet waste, and control of soil erosion. Control of soil erosion is another key element of lake management. Eroded soils add nutrients to the lake through inflowing sediments. A chief cause of erosion is the removal of ground cover during construction within the watershed. The replacement of natural areas with impervious hard surfaces like roads and parking lots greatly increases runoff into the lake and the stream channels that feed the lake. This runoff causes the erosion of stream channels which can increase the silt deposits in the lakes dramatically. Without proper soil conservation practices, the effectiveness of lake restoration measures like dredging is greatly reduced. All of Reston's lakes are surrounded by highly urbanized watersheds. Urban runoff from streets, parking lots, and dense residential developments is another source of contamination. This runoff contains oils, metals, road salts, and sands. People often contribute unthinkingly to lake contamination. It's a common practice in urban areas to use storm sewers to dump motor oil, litter, and other refuse. This is very detrimental to water quality. Why? Because the storm drains in Reston feed directly into the lakes. The drain should not be used to get rid of leaves and other organic debris or to dispose of car-related products, liquid chemicals, and pesticides. Control of chemical inputs is necessary to preserve water quality. Pesticides and herbicides applied in the watershed can also contaminate the lake and accumulate in the fish. That means essential application of chemicals to lawns and gardens should be done conservatively. Another health problem for lakes, and eventually for people, is created by pets, wild animals, and birds. Animal wastes can greatly increase the number of water-related infections. Pet wastes in lakeside areas should be minimized. Residents are reminded not to feed the ducks and geese on the lakes. Feeding only encourages a harmful dependency upon an unnatural food source and eventually harms the lake itself by increasing the nutrient load through the added waste. In the end, the birds become a nuisance rather than something everyone can enjoy. To keep our lakes healthy, the Reston Association maintains an aggressive program of management with several important features. The first is environmental monitoring which focuses primarily on water quality. From spring to fall, we conduct water quality tests on a monthly basis. Important indexes of the health of our lakes, such as dissolved oxygen, phosphorus content, temperature, water transparency, and bacteriological quality are monitored routinely. Any significant change in the quality of the water is followed by intensive sampling to isolate the source of contamination. Once the source is discovered, the Reston Association can take corrective measures to stop the contamination and keep it from recurring. The best way to attack problems caused by silt is to keep the sediments from getting into the lake in the first place. In a word, prevention. County regulations can be enforced to control violators. Dredging the lakes to remove nutrient sediments is an expensive, but necessary tool for lake management. Reston's lakes are dredged on a seven to 10 year cycle. Techniques for managing fish and wildlife are used to control the ducks and geese, to move beavers and muskrats to other more appropriate habitats, 
and to monitor the health of the fish in the lakes. The most common fish you will find in Reston's lakes are bluegill, green sunfish, white crappie, largemouth bass, channel catfish, brown bullhead, northern hogsucker, great chub, American eel, and grass carp. The association improves the lakes aesthetically by routinely cleaning the shorelines, shallow areas, and storm drains. We inspect the three earthen dams on a monthly basis, and we follow a regular program of dam maintenance. All in all, the Reston Association does a great deal to make sure our town's lakes stay healthy so residents can enjoy them. But the association can't do it alone. We need your help. Here are some specific suggestions which will help to maintain good water quality in all of our lakes. Appropriate lawn care practices are important within each watershed. Begin with the proper application of fertilizer. A free soil test by the Fairfax County Extension Service will tell you what your lawn or garden needs. If fertilization is recommended, using slow-release fertilizer in the fall is best. But the number one rule is go easy on the phosphorus. Virginia soils generally require less phosphorus than nitrogen. And as we've seen, Phosphorus is the nutrient most related to poor water quality. If a rainstorm is forecast, wait to fertilize to prevent runoff into the lakes. You can also mulch or compost your lawn clippings and leaves to prevent them from entering the lake and decaying on the bottom. Most pesticides and herbicides are very toxic to aquatic organisms. Use them sparingly, if at all, particularly if there is a chance of the product flushing into the stream or lake. Washing the car can be fun, but remember that car washing contributes directly to nutrient buildup in the lakes via storm sewer runoff. Use low phosphate cleaners. And here's a tip. You can fertilize your lawn by washing your car over a grassed area. To dispose of motor oils, pesticides, and other waste chemicals, Put the material in a sealed container and take it to a Fairfax County disposal station. If you suspect an erosion problem, call the Reston Association. You can help prevent erosion yourself by stabilizing the banks with stones or retaining walls. Long-term retention is strengthened by planting a vegetative buffer. Plants, shrubs, and vines will not only control erosion, they will also filter nutrients before they enter the lake. And finally, good house cleaning practices such as cleaning up pet wastes and picking up litter can improve water quality at the same time they improve the aesthetics of our aquatic surroundings. Reston's lakes have been beautiful and beneficial community assets for many years. Through your efforts and the Lakes Management Program of the Reston Association, we can, together, maintain a thoughtful and effective community effort to keep them that way, indefinitely.